everyone. Welcome back to CypherCon. Today we'll be doing an introduction to Cypher System with Sean K. Reynolds. Sean is a fantastic game designer and writer of many of our favorite Cypher System products like Stay Alive, Claim the Sky, God Forsaken, and so much more. So Sean, the question for today is, what are GM intrusions? Honestly, GM intrusions are my favorite part of the Cypher System. It is a way for the GM to alter something in the current scenario, add a complication. But in doing so, you're rewarding the players and their characters. For example, if you are playing a typical sort of fantasy game and you're fleeing from a bunch of monsters and you, you're in a dungeon and you manage to go and slam the door shut and the warrior is holding the door shut and on the opposite wall there's a locked door and your rogue is trying to pick that lock and the monsters are bashing on the door and trying to get through, the GM might roll a d6 every round. And if they roll a 1, that's when they come crashing through, and then a fight starts. In the Cypher system, the GM doesn't make rolls like that. The GM just decides, when would it be most exciting for the story to have that happen? And maybe it's not necessarily that the monsters are just come crashing right in. Maybe the rogue's lockpick breaks, or the fighter slips and kind of falls to one knee, and then suddenly like the monsters are reaching through with their weapons and they can start making some partial attacks. When a GM does a GM intrusion, they're saying, I'm going to complicate this situation, but I'm going to reward you for it. And what we normally do is, because we like to use cards to represent XP in our games, the GM will hand the player who's receiving the GM intrusion, will hand them two XP cards. And the player keeps one of those and hands one off to another player for whatever reason, like, oh, you saved my life in the last combat, or hey, thanks for that potion, or you told a really funny joke, or you bought some really good snacks for the game today. So one player gets rewarded and passes some of that reward on to somebody else. And you want that XP because you need it for advancement, you can use it for rerolls and for other things. And so that complication could be anything. And I like to come up with really creative ways to use GM intrusions in a situation. Like, oh, we're going to swing on this rope to get across a chasm. That's totally routine. I'm not even going to have to worry about that because I'm an excellent climber. This is a good rope. And the GM's like, oh, and as you're swinging, the rope snaps. What do you do? Or, you know, you're fighting an ogre and you're like, oh, we've got this fight handled, no problem. And the GM says, oh, and then the ogre does a really strong maneuver and knocks your weapon out of your hand and it goes sliding 60 feet away. What do you do? That's the fun of GM intrusions for me. It's like players go, oh crap, now what do I do? And But they're sitting here holding some XP. They could immediately be like, oh, I'm going to spend an XP on a reroll to make something better for myself. Or they might bank that for a little while. But the fun thing for GM Intrusions is that because you are giving XP to the players, they can't really be mad that you're doing a GM Intrusion. It's just like, all right, yeah, you're messing with us, but you're giving me some extra XP for it. And because we expect that half of your character's earned XP over the course of a campaign is going to be from GM Intrusions, and the other half is probably from story awards and character arcs and that sort of thing, like, you're going to anticipate probably getting one GM intrusion per game session. And it's actually totally fine if the GM sits down at the start of the campaign and say, we're going to play in hard mode. Instead of one GM intrusion per player per session, we're going to do two or three. And the players are like, wow, that is that is hard mode. We're going to have a lot more complications going on, but the XP is going to be flying left and right. All right, I'm going to be ready to go and spend and save a bunch more XP. GM could also say, hey, you know what? We're doing kind of a light-hearted sort of game. I want to take it easy because we've got some younger players and we don't want to stress them out. We're not going to do... Maybe, well, maybe we'll do one GM intrusion for the entire group in, in each session. And you're like, okay, cool. I don't have to worry about having quite so many weird surprise challenges come up. I think one of my favorite uses of GM intrusions is just that, yeah, you can mess with just about anything. There are a lot of games that hard code different effects of curses, like, oh, this is a cursed item, or this spell has a weird drawback, or whatever. You don't have to write that out in Cyber System. You can just say, oh, yeah, by the way, that magic sword that you've been using this whole time that you didn't think was cursed, it actually has a curse. Here's a GM intrusion, and now you're kind of going berserk and you're running towards your, your own ally. Or, oh, that spell that you keep casting, yet yeah, actually turns out that whole time you've been drawing the attention of a demon lord who now notices you. 
That's what GM intrusions are. It's just a fun way for the GM to mess with what's going on and add extra excitement to the campaign. That's great. Now, Sean, you did make a mention of something about, like you said, if you have, uh, you didn't want to stress out players and just do one group intrusion. Do you mean that's a one massive intrusion where everybody's going to get an XP and that's just going to affect that particular situation? Or are you still talking about giving it uh, to an individual? It could be either way. Like the GM always has the option of doing a personal intrusion, which is two XP to that player and they pass one off or do a group intrusion, which is it generally affects everybody and every single PC gets one XP. And the GM doesn't have to like hard code what, what award system they're using. One session they might do one group intrusion and one regular intrusion. The next session they might do none of either. It's totally fine. There's no hard and fast rule for what they have to do. Great information, Sean. Thank you so much. Uh, so if anyone out there watching this has any more questions on this topic, join us on the Cypher Unlimited Discord introduction to Cypher System channel. And from us at the CU, we will see you later.